Thanks for tuning in to the Weekly News Recap. This week's episode was written by Juan Aronovich and edited by Michael Bodley. I'm Megan Christensen from Unchained. Let's jump right in. In a landmark decision, Terraform Labs and its co-founder Do Kwan were found by a jury civilly liable for orchestrating a multi-billion dollar fraud on investors. The case, initiated by the SEC last year, centered around the dramatic collapse of the algorithmic stablecoin TerraUSD in May 2022, which erased over $50 billion from the market. The SEC accused Terraform and Quan of misleading investors through the sale of, quote, crypto asset securities, end quote, including false claims about the Terraform blockchain's adoption by a Korean payments company, Chai. The trial of Avraham Avi Eisenberg, accused of exploiting mango markets, began with his defense insisting his actions constituted a lawful, quote, winning, end quote, trading strategy, not fraud. Eisenberg's lawyer, Sanford Talkin, echoed his client's longstanding assertion that the $110 million profit derived from mango markets was the result of legitimate decentralized finance trading. Prosecutors, however, labeled Eisenberg's maneuvers, including alleged artificial inflation of the mango token's price and self-trading, as fraudulent and akin to theft. The case hinges on the interpretation of DeFi trading rules, with Eisenberg's defense highlighting the sector's inherently risky and speculative nature. Despite federal charges of commodities fraud and manipulation, the defense argues that Eisenberg's actions were in line with the speculative ethos of the DeFi world, where traditional financial regulations struggle to find their footing. Former FTX CEO Sam Bankman fried has initiated an appeal against both his conviction and sentencing following his trial's conclusion last month. Bankman Freed was sentenced to nearly 25 years in prison by Judge Lewis Kaplan of the U.S. District Court for the Southern District of New York after he was found guilty on seven federal criminal counts, including fraud. The trial's outcome found that Bankman Freed defrauded FTX customers, lenders, and investors in what prosecutors have described as, quote, likely the largest fraud in the last decade, end quote. Despite his defense claiming that FTX's collapse was due to mismanagement, Kaplan highlighted Bankman Freed's pattern of perjury and conscious wrongdoing. The decentralized lending platform, MarginFi, operating on the Solana blockchain, has booked a significant withdrawal of over $250 million following the resignation of CEO Edgar Pavlovsky. Citing disagreements with the platform's internal and external operations, Pavlovsky's departure has sparked a rapid exodus of funds, with competitor Solend enticing MarginFi users through airdrops to transition assets. MarginFi's total value locked has fallen more than 30% to $655 million on Thursday. Pavlovsky's resignation in an ex-post was attributed to personal reasons, as well as the unresolved operational disagreements. The situation was further complicated by accusations from Solana staking pool Solblaze, which criticized MarginFi for mismanaging Blaze Rewards tokens earmarked for users, leading to heightened community tensions. In response, Solend proposed airdrops to users migrating from MarginFi, further accelerating the outflow of funds. Hong Kong is on the brink of launching Asia's first spot Bitcoin ETFs, with approvals expected next week, according to a Reuters report. The move is set to reinstate Hong Kong's appeal as a global crypto hub, enhancing its competitive edge on the heels of previous challenges stemming from pandemic-era restrictions. The anticipation builds as the U.S. launch of similar Bitcoin ETFs booked a whopping $12 billion in net inflows. With Bitcoin's value surging this year, the initiative is backed by applications from notable asset managers, including the Hong Kong units of China Asset Management and Harvest Fund Management. Tokyo-based MetaPlanet, rolled out an audacious plan to prioritize Bitcoin as a chief asset on its corporate balance sheet, mirroring MicroStrategy's successful Bitcoin investment playbook. The strategy has catapulted MetaPlanet's stock by nearly 90%, following the disclosure of its intent to invest 1 billion yen, which is approximately 6.5 million in Bitcoin, set to become the cornerstone of the company's treasury. Previously a hotel operator, MetaPlanet has diversified its business, but its venture into the Web3 consulting space has yet to achieve profitability. The move to invest heavily in Bitcoin is part of a strategic overhaul spearheaded by incoming stakeholders, including Nashville's UTXO management. 
The pivot reflects a broader belief in Bitcoin's viability as a hedge against inflation, a macroeconomic stabilizer, and a vehicle for long-term capital growth. The investment, predominantly backed by investors purchasing stock acquisition rights, signifies a calculated gamble on Bitcoin's enduring value and liquidity, particularly against the backdrop of the Japanese yen's depreciation and Japan's economic policies. Sushi Dao passed a contentious proposal to transfer over $40 million in treasury assets to a new vault managed by Sushi Labs, following a community signal vote. Garnering 62.5% approval, the vote sought to move the structural change forward, with an ongoing implementation vote showing a strong leaning towards acceptance. Criticism has arisen within the community, particularly from Sushi Swap Compensation Committee member Naeem Bouabziz, who accused the core development team of manipulating the vote by creating new wallets to increase their influence. This proposal marks the first participation of the SushiGov.eth wallet in governance, wielding a substantial voting power that has raised eyebrows. The shift intends to restructure SushiSwap's governance, transferring decision-making and development responsibilities to Sushi Labs. It aims to streamline operations, quicken product development, and ensure Sushi Labs' exclusivity in receiving future airdrops, sparking debate over the centralization of power and the potential sidelining of the DAO's role in governance. Critics argue this could, quote, kill the DAO, end quote, undermining the decentralized ethos SushiSwap was built on. Solana has been suffering network congestion lately, and developers are set to implement a new feature, Timely Vote Credits, aimed at accelerating transaction processing speeds. This initiative, approved by 98.4% of the community, intends to address delays in the validator voting system, reducing network congestion. The TVC mechanism rewards validators with more credits for faster transaction confirmations, countering the existing loophole that allowed validators to gain extra credits by delaying their participation in consensus. The DYDX decentralized exchange, known for perpetual futures contracts, experienced a halt lasting over nine hours due to complications during its version 4.0 upgrade. The stoppage, which paused block production for nine hours and 32 minutes, was resolved after the development team implemented a fix for the bug discovered in the upgrade's code. Widely supported by the community, the upgrade aims to enhance the protocol with new features and improvements, including a governance mechanism to penalize validators for misconduct through MEV slashing proposals. Despite the hiccup, DYDX maintained operational stability, although some users reported transfer issues during the downtime. Eigenlayer, alongside its data availability service, EigenDA, officially launched on the Ethereum mainnet. Before its launch, the service had attracted $12 billion in deposits, highlighting its significant anticipation. Eigenlayer introduces a novel, quote, for staking, end quote, mechanism, allowing Ethereum stakers to lend security validations to other protocols, broadening Ethereum's security infrastructure. This move enables a pooled security system, where staked Ethereum can secure various services beyond the original blockchain. Eigenlayer's initial release, though, is more of a beta version with restricted functionalities, including limitations on in-protocol payments, as well as the absence of a slashing mechanism for dishonest validators. And that's all. Thanks so much for joining us today. If you enjoyed this recap, go to unchainedcrypto.substack.com. That is unchainedcrypto.substack.com and sign up for a free newsletter so that you can stay up to date with the latest in crypto. Unchained is produced by Laura Shin, with help from Nelson Wang, Matt Pilchard, Juan Aronovich, Megan Gavis, Shashank, and Margaret Correa. Thanks for listening. Unchained is now a part of the Coindesk Podcast Network. For the latest in digital assets, check out Markets Daily, five days a week, with host Noel Atchison. Follow the Coindesk Podcast Network for some of the best shows in crypto.